Hello everyone. Welcome to HIMT. I'm Shriram Nagarajan and I invite you on this journey where I take you across route planning on the ECDIS. This video serves as a brief guide to navigators at sea when they are dealing with route planning on the ECDIS. ECDIS is an equipment that is being used on board today for route planning and route monitoring. So as part of the route planning, we designate one of the navigational officers to create the draft passage plan. So who is this on the vessel? The person who creates this draft passage plan on the ship is the second officer. Once the draft passage plan is prepared, the master goes through this draft passage plan, suggests improvements that could be needed for the plan, and once the same is incorporated, eventually approves the final plan. Once the plan gets approved, all the deck officers are briefed on the plan and what is expected to be fulfilled during the passage. The route planning by far is very critical because half the job is done if the route that you make is effective, is safe to take the vessel from origin to destination. As we go across route planning, the first step that comes into mind is appraisal. Here in this appraisal, we broadly consider the routing and various factors that could come uh, and be part of the voyage and rather we could say affect the voyage. Now, what is it when we talk about with the EGDIS? The first thing that comes to mind is, is the ENC coverage accurate? Do you have this chart for the uh, full passage? Once you find that the charts are there, are they of the appropriate scale? And if they are of the appropriate scale, are they up to date? Once we find that we have the sufficient ENC for the passage, we also look into whether any admiralty information overlay is available for this passage. Has it been incorporated? Do we need to apply any TNP notices? Do we need to input any safety information file, what we call the readme file? Have we gone through all the notice to mariners that come in weekly? Did we look into the various nautical publications, list of lights, list and fog signals, ALRS, your mariner's handbook, ocean routing, uh, and so on and so forth. And finally, and most importantly, did we take the limitations of the ENC with respect to its accuracy and source data into consideration in the appraisal stage? Once the appraisal is done, we move on from appraisal into planning the passage. So what do we do when we have to plan the passage? The planning is effective if we look through things on the chart in the best possible scale. So that is why when planning a route on the ICTUS, we need to always consider a uh, display setting. And as we use, do with the paper chart, they should always be the best possible scale what we call one is to one scale. We also need to then check whether the route is okay for us, whether it is safe. And we also need to understand that it would take time to check and scan the route. We have with the EGDIS, a automatic method of route checking, which is a function that is incorporated with the EGDIS. And based on the various settings that we do, the route check can be done by the system. That is what we call automatic route check. So what will happen when the route check is done? It would generate various alerts depending on the settings that we have incorporated. And it is our job to ensure that we adjust the route each time to correct the alerts that are generated. Post completion of the automatic route check, we should also manually scroll along the entire route in the best possible scale which is no doubt one is to one and check for any hazards that would be encountered. All this process takes time and we should not cut short in between. So we need to look at the uh, time needed for it to check the route properly. 
we also need to look into potential limitations of the route planning and checking the same on small scale ENCs. What happens after planning is done? Then we move on to execution. We did appraisal, we did planning. Now it is time to execute. So what do we look for? How good are our seamanship practices? Did we maintain a proper lookout? While this was very much there when we had the paper charts, this is still to be followed and complied with when navigating electronically. Are we aware of the various sources of information that could be used by us for effective safe navigation? Did we look into the various safety settings and adjust the same as per the demand of the voyage to meet up with anything that could come in any given situation? The example for this could be when during coastal navigation, did we look into the vector length, the cross track distance or the corridor, the guard zones, etc. There could also be some of the other things that we would be doing, such as what we call the safety contour and the safety depth. We should, could we set it up higher for the ocean passage so that we could get early warning for landfall or hazards that we could encounter or even the possibility of increased traffic. These are all things that we look for during the execution stage of the passage planning. Finally, when it comes to monitoring stage, we start thinking about what we can get as information from the system. Though the system is capable to generate alarms automatically based on the settings that we have incorporated, we should also keep in mind that we should not rely solely on them. That is, we should not rely solely on the automatic alarms. We could also use various tools such as the radar overlay to help us in monitoring path. How good is our position fix? Which is the equipment which is giving this positional input for the EGDIS? Can we rely on it? While it is very effective, we still need to understand that we cannot rely solely on the GNSS input. Example for that could be the GPS. What about the various display settings that we would be doing? What setting do we do for the ocean passage? What do we do for the coastal passage? What do we do with daytime? What do we do during the nighttime? How do we effectively change the display to incorporate all these needs and still have the egg disk effectively help us with safe navigation? While well, all this is done, we still are left with the task of utilizing the EGDIS to help us reach our destination safely. And that is where over-reliance on the equipment comes in. What are these perils of over-relying on the EGDIS? One of the most important things that could happen is getting glued to the screen, the display. So screen fixation is a peril. While you can look into the information there, it is also good that we cross-check. Failure to cross-check could be the next peril. What about the alarm management? And what about using the various tools that are provided for critical operation on the ICTIS? Do we know how to use it? Did we use it? Did we understand the result that we got and effectively used it in planning and action? The chart survey data can also hamper us as well as the cartography. So moving on from the peril, we move on to uh, looking into what else could be hampering our understanding of the various functions that an EGDIS can help us with. The first thing that we could look here is, what about the chart data? What about the data type? What are the limitations for the ENC? And what is the scale selection we did? And with the route planning, did we do it correctly? Did we implement it correctly? Did we use the various measures and settings appropriately as needed? What about the various symbols that is shown on the chart, the ENC? Do we understand them? Did we set up the ENC 
to the correct viewing scale. What about the display? Was it oriented correctly? What is needed as per the performance standard? Did we set it up to north up? Did we incorporate any other orientation? The Exodus has got a very good feature where it can depict the depth in various shades of coloring, either normally what we call two shades or four shades. Do you know what is to be used? Did you set it up correctly? Please be guided by your company's SMS policy on which it is to be used where, as per your understanding also. Did you select shallow water pattern or did you deselect them? What is the shallow water pattern? How does it help you? So these can all be part of what can hamper our understanding. So moving on from what could hamper our understanding, we also have been using quite a few traditional navigational techniques and we will still be using them when it comes to the EGDIS. And one of the first thing that we could be doing with the EGDIS is incorporating the radar image and the ARPA information, that is the radar overlay. We will still be utilizing parallel indexing to know how we are in respect to a danger or a reference point. Position fixing is being done by the GPS right throughout. Did we cross check our positions? Did we see how we were with the track? Do we know how to look into the track history? What is the dead reckoning positioning? What happens if your GPS fails? And then most importantly, do we know what the chart is telling us by way of the various symbols that are there? So this is very important for us on the EGDIS. How do we integrate all this with the EGDIS? All our traditional navigational techniques need to be integrated with the EGDIS. So we can look into cross-checking and our positioning by manual fixes, radar fixes, and also where radar overlays there. Can we utilize the echo referencing if it is available? We also need to be integrating the EGDIS use into various of these navigational functions. And it goes without saying, whatever is the situation, we have to rise up to be aware of it at all given times. That is what is called maintaining the situational awareness at all times. Having done all this and having looked into various information that is being shown on the display screen of the ICTIS, are we as human beings, as the human interface to navigation makes sense of what the system is trying to say to us? Yes. Situational awareness in any form is needed for us to ensure that passage monitoring is done effectively and help us reach our destination safely. There have been quite a few cases with the EGDIS where the lack of understanding has led to accidents, has also led to environmental damages. Do we want to be on one such situation? If we understand the equipment correctly, if we know what is to be done, if your passage planning is effective, then yes, we stand a much better chance of utilizing the EGDIS for safety of navigation. With this, I would like to thank you for viewing this video and would uh, surely get back to you with quite a few other topics in some of my upcoming videos. If at all you need any information on the variety of courses that we are having, then you could log on to www.hmtmarine.com. If you have any feedback that you need to pass across, please do email to feedback at hmtmarine.com. With this, I would like to take leave and thank all of you for viewing this video. Thank you and stay safe.